climate thinking. So can we give Adam a round of applause? Well, I feel very uh, blessed and humbled to be standing in front of you here today. This is uh, a really important day in uh, taking climate action in the world. Um, but I'm going to start off with something that might uh, surprise you a little bit in what I'm saying. Because fossil fuels are great. And no, I'm not a fan of the Donald. <laughs> the reason why I say that is because... Actually, if it wasn't for fossil fuels, we wouldn't have the society that we have at the moment. This phone that I'm holding in my hand, the Boris bike that I cycled to today, the kettle that was powered by the energy um, from fossil fuels mainly, all of them due to fossil fuels. So they are really important. They have been crucial to getting us to the point that we are now. But they're not right for our future. But we've got to go on a transition. And today what I'm going to talk to you about is how do maybe we take that transition from disproportionate use of fossil fuels to a low carbon future. Because I like the society that we live in. This phone's pretty cool. The cycling around on the Boris bike's great. Being able to go into that fabulous uh, museum behind you is brilliant. So it's how do we keep that and also have much less fossil fuels. Because that magnificent building behind you was actually obviously a power station. It was fueled by oil. In fact, at its peak, it would use 1,600 tonnes of oil a day. And it was going for over 100 years nearly. So, fossil fuel has an amazing ability because it can provide so much energy to so many people so quickly, which wasn't possible before it. So for me, burning fossil fuels is not actually the problem. The problem is the amount of fossil fuels and other greenhouse gases that are being burnt. Now, my first message to you is that rather than making fossil fuel then the bad guy, it's about doing something different. Because by making fossil fuels a bad guy, it's created a very oppositional uh, process. So we've created something which I can term the carbon right, and it's given those people an opportunity to write, unite around something, which I think we can do something different. We need to be a lot cleverer than the carbon right are being. So the three, there are three narratives that I think we can use to move this narrative on, to make a transition to a low carbon economy just kind of flow much more easily than we have been having. The first is fossil fuel divestment. So who here has heard of fossil fuel divestment? Great, okay, so most people. I assume everybody's heard of it. Because fossil fuel divestment is something we all can take action on. If you have some uh, fossil fuel, an investment fund, and you haven't looked at where that is, money is being invested, it's likely actually that your pension is actually invested in some part in fossil fuels. So, first of all, you can look at where your pension is being invested and make sure you change it if it's not in the right area. Then the second thing, even if you don't have a pension or a similar significant investment, you can lobby your uh, employer or your local council or the government even in, in how they can move on from being investing in fossil fuels. And this is something that is happening at an increasing pace. By 2017, there was 800 institutions with $6 trillion of investment which have moved away from fossil fuels. Because those organisations have realised that we have to leave the majority of fossil fuels, which we have, we have now discovered, in the ground. All, all fossil fuels in the ground. Not the majority, all of it. All, not the majority. All fossil fuels left in the ground. Get your argument right. So I am a big fan of divestment. However, divestment in itself isn't necessarily 
going to uh, make the rapid changes that we need because we have to move very fast. So the second point is actually how do we make a game out of this? We can gamify the transition, make it maybe a little bit of fun. fun. So in this game, you get you win if you use less greenhouse gases and you lose if you create pollution. And of course that pollution is the greenhouse gas. And this is a carbon tax. Now, this carbon tax will be the tax on the pollution. Now, many people have a bit of an issue. Have we got, yeah, have many people have a bit of an issue with the idea of a tax. So, what we need to do is work on the branding of it. But that's actually quite possible. Part of the reason why the game can be so powerful is because if we get the messaging right, it can appeal not only to the left, but also to the right wing of our political spectrum. If you're on the left, it can appeal because poor people, generally, almost all, use less fossil fuels than rich people. So if you're taxing less, the poor people, because of their less use, that can help be a progressive way of redistributing wealth. Now, the interesting thing is the right can make a difference. Because they, uh, rather than us taxing the good stuff, which is the income that we make, we can tax the stuff that we want less of, i.e. the pollution. Because the right wing do love reducing income tax. So here's a ready-made solution for reducing income tax. And this isn't something that's just in some form of pie in the sky. There are over 50 countries with some form of carbon tax, including uh, the, some of the standout ones is British Columbia in Canada, have had a very successful... Now, the UK also does have a form of carbon tax, but it's not that great, driven that much change, and it's not wide and deep enough. The economists have crunched the numbers, though, good for them, found that the tax at 80 tonnes, 80 pounds a tonne for the carbon, would create a significant impetus towards the change that we need, and also raise 50 billion pounds a year in tax, which means that we could then reduce the income tax. Now, not only does having a carbon tax discourage the use of uh, fossil fuels, it also encourages clever people to come up with the alternatives. Because fossil fuels are only a problem because um, they're so good at providing that energy that we've just used far too much of it. Now, the interesting thing is, is that the renewables revolution, which be, is there, how, how many people are here are aware that renewables are going through a revolution? Right, that doesn't sound like everybody. So for those who don't know, re renewable technology is going through an absolute revolution. Up to five years ago, even a few, two or three years ago, renewables were globally quite a lot more expensive than fossil fuels. Now, they're cheaper. Most of the time in most countries. And this has happened because business people have realised that the transition to the low carbon economy can make them money. Now, I'm sad of this in some ways because what it means is actually is because entrepreneurs are not doing it because they've got our values. Because my value is that we should take care of our planet and that's a good thing to do in itself. Most of these entrepreneurs who've made, driven the renewables revolution are doing it because they can make great money out of it. But I'm happy because it's happening. To be honest, I don't care why it's happening. It is happening. And that's the important thing, that the renewable revolution is happening. But we can't just rely on the renewables revolution because there are many other areas where we need to reduce greenhouse gases. So this takes me on to my final point, which is that we need a rapid iteration of our society and economy. My opinion is, and my experience is, is this will not happen if we leave it to the large corporations and the large organisations such as governments. It won't happen. 
What we need is people such as you guys, and then also, and some of you might be, clever entrepreneurs coming up with clever ideas. Now this is the other area that I work in personally. I work with uh, sustainable startups, helping them tell their stories more powerfully. Because the research is that there's a 12 trillion dollar global opportunity to deliver sustainability. And that's been calculated by some very um, sober suited management consultants who aren't in it for the change needs. Because for 10 years, I tried to move the dial working with large organizations. And I'll be honest, I failed. Because basically, they're super tankers. And it's really difficult to change the large organizations from the steering wheel. Unless you're the chief executive. Now, there are some honorable exceptions of organizations that have changed, but there's not many. So what? My suggestion is, is that we should focus on the nimble speedboats. Those ones that can make the change. And then what happens is the large super tankers start to follow them. And this is being demonstrated by what's happened with the renewables revolution. There's a lot of small, nimble speedboats which started to create the renewables revolution. And then actually we now have some super tankers which have got on board with that. And what's really nice is not only are we standing in front of a relic of the fossil fuel age, which is directly behind you, Bankside Power Station, but also pretty much a stone's throw away from here, about 100 metres that way, is the largest concentration of renewable, uh, sustainable startups in Europe. It's a place called Sustainable Bankside, and if anybody is interested in uh, being in a startup or around this narrative, then come and talk to me and I can arrange a, uh, uh, a tour of Sustainable Bank Site. It's truly inspiring. There's about 50 startups there doing all sorts of things which are around climate change and other good and environmental sustainability actions. So, in summary, what I'd say is we don't need to hate fossil fuels. We just need to move on from fossil fuels because it's so last year. And the three topics I suggested were divest, do it yourself, lobby those that you can to do it. Whether you're a red socialist, deep green, or even true blue, work with your political representatives to bring in a carbon tax. And then finally, and I don't feel that comfortable saying this, but follow the money. Follow the money, help create Work with sustainable startups which can make transformational differences to our world and help us get to that low carbon economy that we all here are so passionate about. Thank you.